Reverb may not be used in mastering all the time, but it can be a cool little trick to have up your sleeve for some of those tracks that just need a little bit of extra glue. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the reverb module in Final Touch here on the iPad. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where in this series I'm showing you how to master your best music using the Final Touch app here on the iPad. And in this video, we're going to dive into yet another module that we have here in Final Touch, which is the Reverb module. So without any further ado, let's jump down into the iPad and take a look. Welcome back to Final Touch here on the iPad and in this video we're going to take a look at Reverb. I've had to switch up the song because the punk rock song we were using in the last few videos was not really going to work with a Reverb effect. Now if you did miss the last video where we looked at EQ, you can check that out in the link above and down in the description. But let's look at Reverb today. This is my song 6 and 8. It sounds like this. Time after time we are standing in line and we're making the most of each ride. So this may be a candidate for using a little bit of reverb. Now to add our reverb, we grab and drag down into our effects chain our reverb, and now we're ready to start adjusting the settings on our reverb. And let's take a look at those settings that we have. So the first that we have here is some EQ. Now what we can do here is we can set a high pass and a low pass filter. So what the reason for this is, is that we can define what parts of the song that we want to actually have the reverb applied to. So if we only want reverb to the top end, we can bring these up to the top. If we only want it on the bottom end for some reason, we can bring it to the bottom or we can have it stretched out like that to have it over the majority of the track. So that's a good way to make sure that if you only want reverb on the top end, you can actually set that high pass filter to make sure it filters out your low frequencies. The other things we have here down the bottom left, we have our room, hall and plate selection. So we can decide which type of reverb we actually want there from a small room, a larger hall and a plate reverb sound. The next dials along here we have, we've got four dials here, which is our pre-delay that we can set how long before the reverb will actually start after the original sound. Everything from zero milliseconds immediately right up around to 100 milliseconds. We then have our decay time, which is how long the reverb is going to stick around for, and we'll show what that does in a moment. We have our reflections that we can adjust here in dB right up to 6 dB and right down to minus 30, and then we have the room size, so we can determine whether that is a small room or a large room using that knob there. On the right hand side where we would normally have our output we actually have a dry and a wet slider. So the dry slider says how much of the unprocessed signal which doesn't have reverb will be in our mix and then the wet slider is how much wet signal. So yes that's how much reverb we'll actually have in our signal and we can adjust those to adjust the amount. Anything from a very small amount of reverb to absolutely dripping soaking in reverb. So they are the main controls that we have here on our reverb. As with our other modules, we can use some presets by tapping in the presets here and we can decide what we want to use here. Let's just try a small room to start with and you can see here that it changes our filters. It changes all of our knobs along the bottom here that we've got our pre-delay, decay, reflect and room size and we've got it at 100% dry and 9% wet. So let's hit play and see what this reverb sounds like. What I'll do is I'll play it with the reverb on and then I'll remove it just so that you can hear the difference. I'm happy to see that you're waltzing with me and we're dancing in six and eight times. So a very subtle effect, and the thing with reverb is that less is more. So make sure that you're not putting too much in the way of reverb. But just so that you can actually hear the effect, let's pump this up and hit play again with this with a 60-odd percent wet signal here. Now I found... Hopefully you can hear that that sounds quite terrible. So again, you want to make sure that you only have a small amount of reverb because if we drop this back down to about 10%, there would be romance around. it actually does a pretty good job of gluing this mix together. So I'm pretty happy with that. The other option we have here that's very cool is under our dry and wet signal here, we can solo just the wet signal. So this is going to play back just the reverb that's being added. So let's hit play now. And 
And that sounds good, but the one thing that's sticking out to me is that the low end has too much reverb. So this is where we can use our filter. Let's filter this up and say we'll filter out anything below maybe around 1300 hertz. So let's play this back again. And you can see you can sweep and you can adjust all of your controls as you're listening back, which is a great way to work out what you're doing. If we take the solo off now. So you can hear there we've now got a brighter reverb. So you can see here we've got some really good controls and if used subtly, your reverb can be a very cool tool. Now the other thing that we have here is our stereo and our midside. If you want to get the full explanation of what stereo and midside is, check out the EQ video where I go into more detail. But basically we can, instead of determining the left and the right, which we have in our stereo mode, like we can do here, we can separate out the left and the right and do different reverbs on each. We can actually do the mid and the side. So if we tap that across to mid side this can be quite useful because if we just want a lot more reverb on the side than we did on the mids then we could actually do that if we've got something on the edges or vice versa you can actually adapt that and change it and if you make different changes on each it will change on just that part of the reverb so let's recap what we've covered in this video. Our reverb, we can set by dropping it down here into our effects chain at the bottom here. We have our different presets that we can actually adjust here and they will adjust all of our different measurements that we have here on our reverb plugin. We can select at the bottom here between room, hall and plate reverb and then adjust our pre-delay, decay, reflections and our room size. Over here on the right, we have our dry signal, which is how much of our unprocessed signal will be passed through and then our wet which is how much of our reverb signal will be passed through we can solo just the wet by tapping the solo wet button and tapping again to remove and finally we have our stereo and our mid side adjustment here where we can change whether we want to use left and right or mid and side as our adjustments there you go, the very cool reverb module here in Final Touch on the iPad. It may not be something you use every time, but it's a cool tool to have up your sleeve. In the next video, we'll be looking at the Dynamics, which is our multi-band compressor. So that is one that you will not want to miss. Make sure you're subscribed and check the links down below for more Studio Live today.